who you are. You're a part of American history. Well, thank you. <laughs> I've been very fortunate, yes. I've struggled against the United States government mm -hmm. almost all my adult life, fighting for the freedom of my people. Mm -hmm. Yes. And one of the most beautiful things about the United States government, if you want to call it beauty, beauty to them, is that they are expert at colonizing people, mm -hmm. making you a part of the herd mentality. And you don't feel that you're a part of the herd mentality. They bombard you with the fact that you live in the greatest country on earth. And they celebrate it every 4th of July. But it's far from that, you know? It is a, it, it, it's a country that is quicksand. Mm -hmm. And individual liberties, which one, at one time was on firm ground, has been slowly and irretrievably slipping away in this quicksand and you're being sucked in and almost all Americans are in denial. The Constitution and the Bill of Rights are fading. Actually, I shouldn't say all Americans. Those that vote mm -hmm. are in denial. Mm -hmm. I mean, the demo publicans. I mean, the most beautiful thing, though, about this government is that it's making the same mista mistakes every empire has made. Mm -hmm. And the people I've now saw it exposed, the world has seen this country exposed for exactly what it is. And that is a fascist socialist government mm -hmm. that is beginning to run amok. Yeah, it's getting very, very extreme. We were talking before the show about the woman who was uh, dragged down to the police station and handcuffed in front of her kids for not wearing her seatbelt. Oh, my. And then you had a story about someone, too? Yes, uh, another white woman in Farmington, New, uh, New Mexico, mm -hmm. where uh, the police raided the wrong house looking for a suspect. It was, happened to be her house. She objected for, for, vociferously, you know? Mm -hmm. And, in fact, um, resisted the police and everything. She was arrested for obstruction of justice. Mm. They were in the wrong house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a jury convicted her, and the state Supreme Court upheld it. That is amazing. Now, now tell us a little bit about what it is about the Libertarian Party. Now, you said you, you came across the Libertarian Party policies and the doctrine of the Libertarian Party. What is it about the Libertarian Party that, that is so attractive to you, rather than the demo publics, as you like to put demo that? Demo publicans. De that's it, demo publicans. I know, what, I know what we like about it. What is it that you like about it, Russell? It's the only group of non-Indians I've met in the United States of America that think Indian. And it's all about, very simple, individual liberty with responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. Responsible individual liberty. Very simple message. And it is the best message. You know, the first lesson of freedom is that you are free to be responsible. Duh. <laughs> and responsible for yourself. There you heard it. What did he say? Responsibility and freedom. Wasn't mm -hmm. that what Russellman was saying? But he recognized, now this is an American Indian. I hope you people out there, you Chumash people out there are listening. This American Indian, this Sue, uh, Russell Means, good friend of mine, by the way, he's telling you he realized the American Indians cannot be free because the vast majority of Americans who are not Indians, who are not minority, are not free. And this clicked on him about 20 some years ago when he joined the Libertarian Party. Most of you didn't know that. The voice of Pocahontas, father, is a Libertarian and you never would have dreamed it. Clint Eastwood has said he's a Libertarian. <laughs> Will Wheaton, who's the young guy on the new generation Star Trek, he says I'm a Libertarian. There are a lot of good people who are Libertarians. And we all want to cut your taxes, make government nimble and efficient. And I would like to cut those top salaries off the supervisors 10%. Mm -hmm. And I will do it if I get the opportunity. You elect me, and I'm going to embarrass them with this over and over. So we're coming to the end of this show. I wanted to talk about juries and how they're rigged. Not rigged by the defense rigged by the prosecutors and we're going to have this on next week's show and we're going to talk about how juries get rigged 
juries get rigged so that even if you want to find the defendant not guilty, the judge will tell you you have to find him guilty. And the truth is, you are the judge of the facts as a jury person and also the law. And it's always been true. But most judges don't want you to know that. And we've got some interesting stuff for you. We'll play it for you next week. And I hope you show up February 7th at the Government Center, 7 to 9 p.m., run by the League of Women Voters. Oh, and also the Libertarian State Convention to be held at the Santa Maria Inn starting February 15th, 16th, and 17th. 17th and 18th. And 18th. That's right. With that, we have pretty much covered the ground. I want to show you one last little close-up here. If uh, This is a cartoon I thought was so funny. Enron stockholders are being shredded. Got that? They're being shredded. Same thing is happening to you taxpayers. You're being shredded. Well, that's about it for this week on Second Thought. I'm William Wagner, the guy in the white hat running for 5th District County Supervisor, and you're... I'm Susan King. Thanks for being with us. Don't miss it next week.